Hey there, deep diving friend. Today, um, we're ditching our scuba gear okay. and putting on our thinking caps as we explore this fascinating world of why we don't always do what we know we should. And no, we're not talking about that last minute dash for ice cream at midnight. Right. We're talking about performance uh -huh. at work, in organizations, really anywhere systems and humans collide. You sent over this intriguing lecture by Geary Rumler. Yes. A total rock star in the world of performance improvement. Yeah. And let me tell you, my mind is officially blown. That's great. Get ready for some serious aha moments. Rumler would love that. Yeah. He challenges us to think beyond that knee-jerk reaction of yeah. bad performance equals a bad employee. Right. It's way more nuanced than that. And once you see it his way. Yeah. It's hard to unsee it. Okay. I am ready to have my assumptions challenged. Great. So if it's not just about blaming Bob and marketing for that missed deadline, right. what's the missing piece? Well, Rumler brilliantly uses this analogy of a chain it with each link representing a different element of performance. Right. Think individual actions. Yeah. Bigger tasks. Those outputs were all measured on mm -hmm. and ultimately the overall results for the entire organization. Okay, I'm visualizing this chain. Good. So how does this chain reaction of performance actually play out in the real world? Imagine trying to push a 50 foot soaking wet rope. Okay. It's heavy, water's flying everywhere. Yeah. And actually getting some movement at the other end. Good luck with that. Ouch, that sounds messy. Yeah. And about as effective as using a colander to carry water. Exactly. Yeah. And that's precisely how Rumler describes trying to force performance improvements without understanding the entire chain. Okay. Each link, yeah. each connection point matters. So no more yelling at the rope or Bob in marketing. No more yelling at Bob. Got it. That's right. But if it's not just about telling people to get their act together, how do we actually improve performance? This is where Rumler's big idea comes in. Mm. He calls it the performance system. Here it's a brilliant five-part framework that cracks the code of why people do or don't do what's expected. Okay, let's unpack this system. Yeah. What are the key components? First up, we have the stimulus or cue. Okay. This is what triggers someone to act in the first place. So think a notification that a report is due. Yep. A manager breathing down your neck for an update. Yep. Or maybe even just that blinking light on your coffee maker in the morning. You got it. Yeah. Then we've got the response or action. Okay. What the person actually does when faced with that stimulus. Do they hit that deadline? Right. Scramble to appease their manager or completely ignore the siren song of caffeine. We've all been there. And critically, we have to consider the consequences. Okay. What happens to the individual because of their response? Yeah. Are there positive vibes and high fives for a job well done? Or do they get penalized, even in subtle ways, for following the rules? This is where things get juicy. Yes. Because often the consequences for doing the right thing aren't all sunshine and rainbows. You're catching on quickly. I'm trying. And to understand those consequences, we need feedback. Oh, okay. This is the information, mm -hmm. direct or indirect, uh -huh. that tells the person how they're doing. Okay. Whether their actions are actually moving the needle. And finally, yeah. we have the performer themselves, the person navigating this crazy web of cues, responses, and consequences. Right. It's like they're juggling chainsaws in a windstorm. That's a vivid way to put it. Yeah. And Rumler's key insight here is that if any single part of this system is wonky, yeah. performance suffers. Okay. It's rarely just about the person. Yeah. It's about the environment they're operating in. This is eye-opening. It is. And speaking of eye-opening, I have to ask about that hilarious yet slightly terrifying story Rumler tells about airline baggage fees. Oh, yeah. You know the one? Yeah, the excess baggage charge case study. It perfectly illustrates how even a seemingly simple request can turn into a performance nightmare when the system is working against you. It's one of those stories that makes you laugh out loud and then immediately call your therapist. Right. So let's break this scenario down using Rumler's performance system. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so the stimulus is a passenger rocking up to the check-in counter with three suitcases. Okay. One more than their ticket allows. Right. The desired response from the airline's perspective is for the ticket agent to politely inform the passenger about that lovely excess baggage fee uh -huh. and collect the payment. Sounds straightforward enough. Right. Yeah. But as Rumler points out, the actual response is often a different story. Oh, yeah. The agent might conveniently forget. Yeah. Waive the fee or just avoid eye contact altogether. Right. Why is that? Here's where we have to put ourselves in the ticket agent's shoes. Yeah. 
and consider the consequences within their work environment. Because, let's be honest, confronting a sleep-deprived, already stressed traveler about a $25 fee is often a recipe for an emotional meltdown of epic proportions. You're getting it. Yeah. Suddenly that small fee doesn't seem worth the potential backlash. Right. The angry customers, the mountains of paperwork, yeah. and let's not forget the dreaded supervisor materializing out of thin air. Oh, yeah. Right. It's like the system itself is whispering to the agent, Yeah. don't you dare collect that fee. Exactly. Right. The consequences for meticulously following the rules are often far more negative than the consequences for quietly looking the other way. And here's where it gets really interesting. Even the supervisors, the ones who are supposed to be enforcing the rules, are trapped within their own messed up performance systems. You're right. Yeah. Rummler brilliantly points out that those supervisors are probably being measured on things like wait times. Yeah. And customer satisfaction scores. Right. Not how much money is collected from baggage fees. So even if they wanted to give their team a virtual high five for collecting those fees, yeah. their own performance metrics are practically begging them to do the opposite. It's a perfect example of how these systems can become so misaligned that they end up punishing people for doing what's best for the organization in the long run. It's mind boggling. It really is. But this is where Rumler's insights become so valuable. Yeah. Because once you understand the system, yeah. you can start to spot the breakdowns and actually make meaningful changes. And that's what separates the performance gurus from the rest of us. Yeah. Most organizations see a problem and immediately assume it's a training issue. Right. Back to our beleaguered ticket agents, the knee-jerk reaction might be to send them back for yet another training on the importance of baggage fees. But as Rumler so eloquently puts it, that's like sending your phone in for repair because the outlet is broken. It's not going to magically fix the fact that the system itself is quietly, or maybe not so quietly, discouraging the very behavior they want to see. Precisely. It's crucial to remember that training is only effective if it's aligned with the overall performance system. Yes. It's about harmony, not just hammering information into people's heads. This is such a critical takeaway for anyone who manages a team, yeah. designs processes, or frankly, anyone who's ever been frustrated by a system that seems intentionally designed to make their life miserable. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about moving beyond blaming the individual mm -hmm. and taking a step back to see the bigger picture. Which brings us to another one of Rumler's brilliant insights, the idea that organizations are like giant interconnected webs of performance systems all influencing each other in ways we might not even realize. He's spot on. Yeah. Organizations aren't just collections of individuals. They're these complex interwoven hierarchies of performance systems, each one impacting the next. Right. One person's output is another person's input and so on. Wow. It's like a delicate dance. Yeah. But instead of music, we have KPIs and performance reviews. So if one link in that chain is broken. Yeah. It creates this ripple effect throughout the entire organization. Exactly. Wow. Think back to the airline example. Yeah. We talked about how the ticket agent might be hesitant to collect the baggage fee because of the potential for a customer meltdown. Right. And the lack of support from their supervisor. Right. And then we went one level up and realized that the supervisor's hands were tied because of their own performance metrics. It all comes back to those interconnected systems. Right. The supervisor isn't necessarily being heartless or lazy. They're just responding to the pressures and incentives mm -hmm. within their own little corner of the organizational hierarchy. It's like that saying, yeah. every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. And that's why simply retraining individuals yeah. or implementing those quick fix solutions right. rarely leads to lasting change. Right. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Yeah. It might look like you're doing something. Yeah. But you're really just delaying the inevitable. So what's the alternative? If quick fixes and blame games aren't the answer, how do we actually start to untangle these performance knots and create systems that work? That's where Rumler's genius really shines through. Okay. He gives us this practical framework, yeah. these tools for dissecting those frustrating situations and uncovering the real leverage points for change. I'm all about practical tools. Yeah. Give me the breakdown. He encourages us to channel our inner detectives, mm -hmm. put on our metaphorical magnifying glasses, yeah. and really map out the performance system. Okay. It's about identifying the stimulus, mm. the desired response, yeah. what's actually happening, right. the consequences, 
those hidden feedback loops. Right. The whole shebang. So like we did with those poor overworked ticket agents. Exactly. Yeah. We need to look beyond the surface level complaints. Yeah. And really dig into the underlying mechanics of the system. Once you start connecting those dots. Yes. Asking those tough questions. Yes. You can unlock some incredible insights. Absolutely. Like, for example, what are the actual incentives driving people's behavior? Yes. Where are the communication breakdowns happening? Right. What information is being overlooked or misinterpreted? It's like we need to become performance system whisperers. Yeah. Learning to decode the silent language of incentives, feedback loops, and those unintended consequences that are often lurking beneath the surface. I love that analogy. And the beautiful thing is once you start seeing the system, yeah. you can't unsee it. Right. You start to notice those patterns everywhere, at work, right. in your personal life. Even standing in line at the grocery store. Speaking of frustrating experiences. Oh, yeah. This whole conversation is making me think about a recent retail adventure that nearly pushed me over the edge. Oh, no. You know how much I love a good deal? Yes. But sometimes those deals come with a hidden price tag of epic proportions. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. Tell me you didn't get lost in the abyss of a convoluted return policy. It's bad. Okay. The actual return policy was fairly standard, yeah, um, but the process for actually returning the item was a comedy of errors. Oh, no. I swear I aged a decade just trying to navigate the system. Okay, I'm hooked. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the painful yet oddly entertaining details. All right, so picture this. Okay. I had the receipt. The tags were still attached. Yeah. The item was in pristine condition. Basically, a, t a textbook example of a returnable item. Okay. But when I approached the first employee, yeah. they told me I needed a manager's approval. Ah, the classic escalation to authority maneuver. Always a telltale sign that the system might need a bit of an overhaul. Right. Yeah. So I patiently wait for the manager. Okay. Who then informs me that they can't process the return at that particular register. Oh, no. Apparently, I need to go to a special customer service desk on a completely different floor. Of course. Because adding a layer of physical activity to the mix is exactly what a frustrated customer needs. Seriously. By this point, my patience is wearing thinner than my grandma's antique doilies. Oh, my God. I finally tracked down this elusive customer service desk. Okay. And Wait. guess what? Don't tell me. They were on a lunch break. No. Or oh. maybe they vanished into thin air. No, even better. Oh, no. They informed me that they couldn't process the return either. What? Because the original purchase had been made with a gift card. Huh? Apparently, there's some ancient sacred ritual for gift card returns that only the manager at the original register is privy to. Oh, so they sent you all the way back to square one? Yes. That's not a return policy. It's a wild goose chase disguised as customer service. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. It took me almost an hour to return a simple pair of pants. Wow. And the worst part is I couldn't shake this feeling that everyone involved the employees, the manager, even me, the increasingly exasperated customer. Yeah. We were all just cogs in this poorly designed machine. It's a classic example of how a system can create unnecessary friction. Yeah. Frustration. Yeah. And wasted time and energy for everyone involved. Right. And for what? I know. All because no one stopped to question if the process actually made sense. Exactly. It's like... They design the system to discourage returns, even though a smooth return process can actually build customer loyalty and trust in the long run. It also goes back to Rumbler's point. Yeah. We need to apply this system's thinking. Yeah. Not just to individual performance. Right. But to the design of our processes. Right. Our policies, our entire organizational structure. Because if we only focus on the people. Yeah. We're missing the forest for the trees. Precisely. Yeah. It's like trying to treat a symptom without addressing the underlying cause if yeah. we want real yeah. lasting change. Right. We have to zoom out and look at the entire chain of events. Yeah. Those interconnected systems. Right. And those pesky unintended consequences that tend to pop up like uninvited guests. So how do we start applying this systems thinking in our own lives? I mean, it's one thing to analyze airline baggage fees. Right. But most of us aren't designing organizational systems on a daily basis. You'd be surprised. Systems thinking is like a Swiss army knife for navigating the complexities of life. Oh. It can help us decode those frustrating situations, yeah. improve our relationships, right. even make better decisions about things like our health or finances. Okay, now you're speaking my language. Give me some real world examples. Okay. How can I use this to upgrade my own life? Well, let's start with a common one, procrastination. 
Okay. We've all been there, right? Oh, yeah. That looming deadline, mm -hmm. that growing to-do list. Yeah. But instead of tackling it head on, yeah. we find ourselves organizing our sock drawer. Right. Or suddenly feeling the urge to bake a three-tiered cake. Ouch, that's a little too close to home. Right. But you're right. I'm a master procrastinator, especially when it comes to those dreaded household chores. Yeah. What's the system's perspective on that? Is it just laziness? Lack of willpower? Not necessarily. Remember, Rumler taught us to look beyond blaming the individual. Right. And consider the system at play. Right. So let's apply his framework to your procrastination predicament. Okay. What's the stimulus or cue that should be prompting you to tackle those chores? Well, I guess it should be the sight of my ever-growing laundry pile. <laughs> Or that layer of dust on the coffee table that's starting to resemble a geological formation. Okay, so the stimulus is there. Yeah. But the desired response, actually doing the chores, isn't happening. Right. What about the consequences? Yeah. What happens when you procrastinate? Honestly, not much. Sure, I might feel a twinge of guilt. Yeah. But nothing catastrophic usually happens. Right. Maybe the real problem is that there aren't any immediate negative consequences for my procrastination. You're onto something. Okay. It's like... The system is actually rewarding your procrastination right. by not having any real consequences for delaying those chores. Yeah. And what about feedback? Were you getting any signals that things are spiraling out of control? Well, my partner might occasionally drop some subtle hints, right. but they're pretty good about picking up my slack, right. which only reinforces my procrastination. Uh-huh. So your procrastination system has unintentionally created a feedback loop yeah. where someone else is mitigating the consequences of your inaction. Right. Brilliant. Wait, really? I think you're giving my procrastination skills too much credit. Not at all. Yeah. The point is, once you understand the system, yeah. you can start to redesign it. Okay. Maybe you need to introduce some more immediate positive consequences for tackling those chores. Okay. Reward yourself with something you enjoy after a productive cleaning session. Yeah. Or create a sense of accountability by teaming it up with your partner to divide and conquer those tasks. This is making me realize that systems thinking is like having a superpower. It is. Instead of feeling powerless against those frustrating situations, we can actually analyze them. Yes. Tweak them and optimize them to work in our favor. Exactly. It's about moving beyond blame. Right. Beyond quick fixes. What? And embracing the power of understanding and intentionally designing the systems that shape our lives. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. Yeah. I feel like I have a whole new toolkit for tackling those everyday challenges yes. and maybe even making some positive changes in my own little corner of the world. Remember, even small changes can have a ripple effect. Right. So be curious. Yeah. Be observant. Okay. And never underestimate the power of asking, what if it's not the person but the system? Wise words to live by. Thanks to the brilliant Geary Rumler for giving us this framework. Yes. And to you for helping us connect the dots between these powerful ideas and our everyday lives. It was my pleasure. And to all our fellow deep drivers out there, until next time, keep questioning. Yes. Keep learning and keep optimizing those systems. Mm -hmm.